Hi, everybody, and welcome. My name is Emeo Webster, and I am the Math Share Program Manager, as well as your trainer for today. In our workshop, I'll be walking you through how to create problem sets and giving you an explanation on how to share them with the students. If you're looking for more detailed information about sharing, I recommend you check out our YouTube channel. Um, that will have more like focused workshops, like specifically using Google Classrooms, for example, on how to share. Um, now, obviously, this is a recording, so you won't be able to ask questions in real time. But I do encourage you to email me if you have questions that come up. The email address is mathshare at benetech.org. Again, mathshare at benetech.org. I'm always happy to answer questions. I'm also happy to set up a time for us to hop on Zoom and do like a private session or workshop. Um, that's no problem at all. With that, let's jump in. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and actually walk through creating problems in real time. When you're on the Math Share homepage, you'll have the option to sign in or sign up. Uh, if you don't have an account, I really do recommend creating one. They're free. Having an account allows you to customize your personalization settings, and it also makes sharing, with pro uh, sharing problems with students a little more straightforward. Um, when you go to the login, and you do that by clicking on or selecting the login button, you'll have the option to log in with Google, that's Google Classrooms, or Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. Um, you can also con select, select the link continue to match here without logging in, and that will let you log in as a guest. I'm going to use Google because that's what I, I use, um, but if you were to use Microsoft Teams, the interface would be exactly the same. If you're logging in as a guest and not with an account, the way your dashboard looks will look different. For example, you won't have um, the recent sets that I'm currently displaying on my dashboard, but the instructions I'm giving you will still be applicable. Um, for those of you who don't have access to a screen or can't see my screen, uh, by log when I log in, I am taken to my MathShare dashboard. And on it, there's three distinct areas. There's first at the top is a button that says create a problem set. Below that are recent sets that I've created recently. <laughs> um, and then below that are pre-made sets that just exist in the MathShare database. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're logged in as, or not logged in, if you're accessing MathShare as a guest, you will not have that recent sets visible. It'll just say create a problem set. Um, and I think the pre-made sets. So just something to keep in mind. For creating a problem, what you'll do is select that create a problem set button. This pulls up a pop-up menu that says select button palettes available for this problem set. What this is asking you to do is choose the digital keyboard options that will be available for your student. The choices are the edit palette, the operators palette, the notations palette, and the geometry palette. The edit palette allows students to use the calculate function. So if they want to do like simple addition, subtraction, or division by selecting calculate, it would do that for them. It also is what the student can use to cross out and simplify in the problem itself. The operators palette is your standard math symbols, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, et cetera. Notations palette has square roots, uh, exponents, fractions, things like that. And then the geometry palette is your really basic geometry symbol. So angle, pi, uh, parallel, vertical. If you want a palette not to be displayed to your students, meaning like if you don't want them to actually have access to one of these palettes when they're working through a problem, you simply um, deselect the checkbox next to the palette you don't want them to have. Uh, I'm going to have them all selected for this. Actually, no, I'll take off geometry so that we can demonstrate what it looks like when one isn't selected. Um, once you're happy with your selection, you'll select the next button, and that'll take you to the specific problem set that you'll be creating. On this page, the information that's important to note is that you have a title. The default title is new problem set and then the date. You have problem set controls. Um, in this field, you will choose if your students will be required to explain their steps and if their work that they do will be attached when they share the problem, or I'm sorry, their answers with you. 
um, in that field, that problem set controls field, there's also a change math symbols button. Clicking on or selecting that button will take you back to that previous page that we were just on with the math palettes. And you can do this if you change your mind about what you want to have available. Lastly, there's the add new problem button, which is what we'll be clicking on in a second. But first, I want to show you how to rename a problem set in case you're curious. Um, and you do that by selecting or clicking on the edit icon. Looks like a pencil for anybody who's looking at the screen. Uh, and then you puts up a pop up menu and you just type in what you want your title to be. Um, I will call this problem problem set for really creative, I know. <laughs> uh, once I've named it, I'm going to require explanations and including the work when sharing. And then I'm going to select that add new problem button. Doing this opens up a new window. Uh, it's the problem set creation window. It has a space for you to write the equation, a space to write the prompt, and it displays the palettes that we've chosen to have available. In this case, calculate operators um, and notations, but no geometry because I unchecked that at the beginning. To actually enter in your problem in the equation field, which is on the left side below the Benetech match here, that's where you'll actually type in your equation. Um, I'm going to do something simple. Let's do 3x plus 5 equals 28. Let's make it even easier. 5x plus 3 equals 28. Um, and then in the prompt field, which is on the right hand side, you'll give the instructions that you'll, well, you'll give the instructions of what you want your student to do. So in this case, solve for x. A couple things to note. Um, if you're using if, if you want the problem read to you, both the problem and the instructions, there is an icon or a button of a speaker. Clicking on that will have the problem and the instructions read back to you. Um, the way that I am currently logged into my computer, I can't demonstrate that for you. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, but you can take my word for it. And when you're creating math share problems, you can always try it out. Um, the second button to be aware of is the microphone button or dictate button. Clicking on that will allow you to speak your instructions and it will transcribe them for you. So two things to note. Um, now that I have my equation written down and the instructions, I'm going to select the add problem button and that adds the problem to this specific problem set. From here, I have two options. I can add another problem to this set or I can finish it and go back to the problem set main page. Um, I, I will add another one just so you can see what it looks like. Let's do a word problem. Uh, how about Mary has three apples and gives one to Sam. If Sam eats an apple, how many does he have left? An apple. And then if I wanted to dictate it, um, I would just say, solve the word problem. And then the text that I spoke appears as the instructions and I'm good to go. So I will add this problem. I'm now happy with my problem set. So I'll select the done button. Now I'm brought back to the problem set dashboard and I can see that while I still have the title and I still have the problem set controls, and I still have the add new problem button, I now also have the two new problems that I created. If I go back to the math share, like my main math share dashboard, then under recent sets, I'll now see that problem that I just created. Again, this is a feature only applicable to those who are logged in, which is why, again, I encourage having an account. So going back, I just clicked again on the problem set webinar that we just created. Um, and I did this because I wanna show you how to actually share it. Well, not show you, I'm gonna explain how you can share it. And you do that by clicking or selecting the three dot menu. This pulls up the option to duplicate or share the problem set. Duplicate's an interesting one. It does exactly what it sounds like. It will duplicate the problems in your set. This is handy if you want to take a set and tweak it a little bit, but also save the original format. Um, but we want to share, so we'll go to the share problem set. 
doing this pulls up a pop-up menu that has three different options. Um, one is a link, and that link is specific to the problem set that you've created. You can use this link to share the problem set with your student if you're using an LMS that's not Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. Um, you can use it if you're not using an LMS at all. You can simply email that link to your student and then if they click or select it, it'll bring them to the mass share problem set that you've created. Um, you, know, you can copy and paste it again into an LMS that's not Google Classrooms like um, Squology or, um, um, I don't know, that's the one that's coming to mind right now. <laughs> but Canvas, whatnot, you can just copy and paste that link into it. And then again, the student would click on it and it would bring them to the mass share problem set. Um, if you're using Google Classrooms or Microsoft Teams, again, they're currently inter integrated into the mass share API. So you would simply click on whichever one you're using. It'll open up a Google Classrooms pop-up menu. Mine's currently loading. I bet it's actually already open somewhere, but I'm not sure where. <laughs> um, Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I just didn't scroll down. Uh, you could choose the account that you want. If like me, you have multiple accounts um, and then you would choose the class that you're doing, class that you're sharing the problem set with and then the action that you're gonna do, which is create an assignment. You press go and it would take you automatically to your Google Classrooms account. Um, again, if you want more information, detailed information about sharing with Google Classrooms, do check out our YouTube site. Um, we have an entire workshop dedicated just to creating and sharing specifically with Google Classrooms. And that really is it for creating and sharing problems. Um, one thing I will note is that I've been using my trackpad, but MassShare works just fine with tabs. You can tab through anything you want. It also works with screen readers. Um, so there's lots of accessibility built in. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and actually that's not true. I am gonna share one more thing. I want to share um, the links that I mentioned for anybody who's more visual. Um, again, I encourage you to ask questions or arrange a time for us to do a web uh, workshop specifically for you or for your teachers or coworkers. Um, and that email address is mathshare at benetech.org. If you can see the screen or have access to a screen, it's currently being displayed. I also mentioned the YouTube channel a few times, um, and that is www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash MathShare. And that will bring you straight to the MathShare YouTube channel where we have tons of recordings of previous webinars, how-to guides, um, demos. It's cool, I would say check it out. And with that, we conclude today's workshop. Thanks again for joining me. I hope this was helpful and feel free to reach out with questions. <laughs> Take care, bye-bye.